Elf, you look rested. Friends, I am spooked, absolutely spooked, from all of the Dallas Card Show mess, the theft. And we're going to talk about the National coming up in two weeks. Card shows, are dealers going to have all their high-end stuff coming with them? Are they going to change plans? What is going to change in our sports card hobby? Stick around. What's going on, sports card hobby family? We are back again. You know what that means. Another day, another sports card video. Today, we're going to talk about the Dallas card show theft, the ripple effects of this thing. How are dealers going to adjust? How is the average collector slash hobbyist going to adjust? Before I get started, huge thanks to the Tuesday shout out folks. Card Capsule, you need supplies, but you don't want to pay a fortune for them. Check out Card Capsule, use Sports Card Dad promo code for 10% off. There's going to be a link below for all of this stuff. Wooten Sports Cards on whatnot. You're on whatnot and you're thinking, man, I want some wicked inventory and I want to be entertained. It's Wooten Sports Cards, 12,000 followers, five star reviews definitely check out Wooten Sports Cards. JustCollect.com you've got a collection to sell and you're like man I don't know who to call check out JustCollect.com they've got an easy appraisal form there fill it out they will get back to you and let you know what you've got. All right not only do I have my stuff insured but I also am going to get a safety deposit box today. All of my good stuff it's going to be in the box it'll come out for visitation on occasion but like I said I mean and I know this isn't anything new. Cards get stolen at, at card shows. Dallas Card Show in particular, I feel like there's there's been a couple of times this year and, and in years past where the police have had to be called. They're escorting somebody out. This isn't some brand new thing to sports cards. I do understand that. I was down in Panama City, Florida visiting my old hometown and I went to a local card shop there and the guy told me that a couple of years back, a couple hundred thousand dollars of vintage baseball cards had been taken from his store. They changed locations. I did a video going back, I don't know, six months, nine months ago where it was like literally a truck drive Driving into a store broke the glass and then they all ran in and grabbed stuff. I mean, it's gotten really serious with this cardboard getting very, very expensive here over the last few years. It's, it's absolutely no joke. This is the most recent reminder for us. I mean, I was in Atlantic City at the National. Steve, flipping Steve, he had two cases with him. He had the big case and he had the smaller case. And he's like, man, do you mind holding the smaller case for me? The big case is killing me. No problem, Steve. I'll take care of it. I'm walking around and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go grab a burger. I go up front. I grab some food. I'm at the checkout line, put the case down, pull my wallet out, pay for my burger, walk away with my burger and my wallet. The case is sitting there on the cashier stand. So th there's a lady there. Fortunately, at least there would be a witness. I walk away 50 feet or so and I run into Steve. Thank God, frankly. I mean, thank God I wasn't walking around for 30 minutes. I ran right into Steve and he said, where's my case? And I immediately, like, my heart sank, like I got pale and I just turned around and started running back to the concession stand. And we're talking, guys, like 90 seconds, maybe two minutes I left. But in a blink of an eye, in two minutes, like we saw in Dallas, it was 15 seconds. And these guys walked off with a $2 million case of cards. Now, the thing that's even more shocking about this is oh and to finish the, to wrap that story I did I did get that case back for Steve so I I still have a friendship and Steve doesn't hate me for the rest of his life so yes we recovered that case but the point being is is that it's a little black case just like all of them they're all the same you know this case walks off we wouldn't be able to find it in the sea of cases very easily would have been gone it was the longest two minutes of my life running back there and it was there and there wasn't one dollar cards in that case either it was significant so it wasn't two million but it was significant. I think part of the shock too of this thing is, do people not realize the consequences of, of this level of theft in the state of Texas? And let's just take a look. I pulled some, some stuff up from the internet, various law firm websites, very helpful. Consequences in Texas. Petty larceny, eh, it could be you know something up to 1500 bucks. It could be a class A misdemeanor. Maybe you get a slap on the wrist if you have a good attorney. And again, I'm not an attorney or a judge or a law person. We are just looking at what the internet tells us, but I saw this on a few different sites, so it looks pretty consistent to me. First degree grand theft larceny, grand larceny charge, 
is for goods in excess of $200,000 in the state of Texas, which I think we can all agree, if you've seen the pictures of this stuff, it's well in excess of $200,000. And that's not just like, you know, oh, we're just pulling numbers out of the air. I mean, check comps on that stuff that was listed in the pictures. It is in excess of $200,000. Now, the prison sentences says here, it can range from five, okay, five, five years, to 99 years, five to 99 years in prison and a fine up to $10,000. I'm sure the fine up to 10 grand is the least of your worries, five to 99 years in prison. So you walk off with a case of cards that's in excess of $200,000, which this was, you could be spending decades, decades in prison. It's not a slap on the wrist. It's not stealing cards out of the dollar box, you know, less than 1500 where you get slapped on the wrist with a misdemeanor. This is the, this is the business. This is the real stuff. And I just, that's what's so shocking about it. And it can't be construed as some sort of an accident. I don't see how this could be defended. It's right there on, on video and you've got these guys working in tandem together. It's all right there. I mean, that, that's the biggest shock. I think that is really the, the biggest shock of it for me is, you know, the guts to be able to carry this out. I mean, it's absolutely tremendous. You could literally spend the rest of your life in prison. And so what does it mean? We're going to go to the largest card show in the country in two weeks. We're going to be in Cleveland in the National. I'm sure, hell, my God, how many of the security firms, the, you know, the physical security firms have been called over the last couple of days to up the security at the Cleveland National. And not even just from the card show itself, not from Joe and all those guys trying to figure out this stuff out, because I know that I'm, I'm certain that Joe and the gang over at the National are paying very close attention to what is going on here. And so I would expect to see heightened security in Cleveland. I, I would expect to see it, not even just from the show, but even just from individual dealers, you're walking in there with millions of dollars. Of, there is going to be millions of dollars of cards at that show and, you know, trade nights and all the other stuff. The trade nights are actually going to take place in the, in the venue, in the building, which if I'm in hindsight now, I'm actually thinking not only logistically is that good, but just from a security standpoint, I'm happy with that. I think that that's great. But how many of these booths are gonna have a big old dude there? It doesn't even need to be armed security. It can just be a huge guy. When I went to the, the trade night, the, um, the rip night, the tops rip night up in New York where Tom Brady was, there was literally a dozen, maybe 15 dudes that looked like NFL linemen that were there at this event. It was actually, it was, it, it actually felt like overkill. I guess it's not overkill if you have an incident, but this was a, keep in mind, this is an intimate venue. It was literally held at a brewery, a smallish brewery at Met Stadium. It was not large at all. So you have Tom Brady coming in, big time, you know, athlete, it's like having Michael Jordan. It's like having, having Taylor Swift walk in. All right, maybe not Taylor Swift. She's a bigger star than Tom Brady, but I think that you get my point. There was so much muscle at this event that nothing was going down at this thing. And then the second part of this is how many dealers are just gonna opt out of bringing these types of cards? You know, cause the other part is, hey, look, we've got the internet. You can very easily bring, you know, all of your stuff that's maybe 5,000 and under and your really big stuff, maybe you've got something on the table that says, hey, ask about high end, ask about high end 50s baseball, ask us about our high end 80s basketball or whatever. And that way you just get into a conversation and you do a deal that way, as opposed to having basically diamonds sitting in a case. Cause that's really, we need to look at this that way now, I think. And, and I'm not saying that people haven't before, but these are, uh, card stores are basically jewelry stores. You know, a card show is basically a jewelry show with diamonds everywhere. Every case is full of, it's full of cash and people are carrying around you know, these, these cases of cash and diamonds. We're all carrying around expensive items even if you don't have a $50,000 card, you might have, you know, 20, $200 cards in your case. That's a $4,000 case. For most people, that's a heck of a lot of money. Even for people that are bringing $10, $20 cards, those add up if someone just takes it. I hope that this is really kind of the mega, mega wake up call. My brother swears on air tags, and I've heard these being mentioned here as well. 
air tags and cases in comment sections reacting to the Dallas card show theft. My brother has these and everything. Travels with, with his luggage. He's got these, these air tags are made by Apple. Um, I don't have any. I probably will have some pretty soon. And the whole idea is, is that, you know, they, they're trackable. You hide them and, and you can track that thing. It's, it's on your, basically with your cell phone and they're 25 bucks. I think I'll throw it up. I Googled it and it's on Amazon. They're 25 bucks. I think Amazon day is coming up. Maybe we should all buy a 10 of them or something like that. But I think added security, just taking more time, thinking about what we're doing, you know, that's got to be the end result here because the trusting the people in the hobby, as much as there's so many great people, because there really are, there's tons of awesome people. We also can't forget that it also brings out the scammy of the scammiest are going to come out and try to get one over on people in this hobby. So how are you reacting to this news? Are you doing anything differently at all? Or were you already kind of ahead of this? I know some people, they're insured, they've got a giant safe, and I've already had these type of preventative measures. The added one I'm adding is the safety deposit box. But I've also heard of a lot of people that travel with that Pelican case and they've got no insurance, they've got nothing. They've got absolutely no recourse if that thing disappears. So how are you adjusting, if at all? Let me know in the comments section below, my friends. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.